Hello, and welcome to the first ever Back to Space News Flash, where we're going to be talking about things that are currently happening, things that are going to happen, and things that have happened in space. So let's start with a quick recap of what happened this past weekend. So on Friday, it was Friday the 13th, and it was actually a harvest moon. Little known fact, it's called a harvest moon because of the farmers. Those 25 extra minutes of light helped the farmers continue their cropping. Is that a that word? Cropping? It lit up the night sky and it was really beautiful. And actually it was so rare that another occurrence like that will not happen until August 13th, 2049. They also said if you looked at it at the perfect time, it looked like a glowing pumpkin. Get your pumpkin spice lattes ready. There was an avalanche on Mars, which is a really amazing photo provided by the NASA Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. NASA put a huge, gigantic, inflatable habitat prototype into testing as they continue to to look for ways to travel into deep space. Don't look at me while I flip my nose. India's first lunar landing attempt did not go as planned. The spacecraft failed to reach the surface safely. The lander was supposed to touch down on Friday, September 5th, but the India Space Research Organization lost contact with the spacecraft before touchdown. Investigators are not yet sure about the cause. Did you hear that? That is conspiracy theories of Bruin. Seriously, I'm actually very interested in um, conspiracy theories, not because I believe them, but because they're very creative. They have uh, said that they have located the lander, but they can't communicate with it. Talking about being ghosted. Water vapor has been found in the atmosphere of a distant planet that is twice the size of Earth. It is actually the smallest world yet found with water in the surrounding atmosphere. And it's possible that it even rains liquid there. That makes this world an ideal candidate in the ongoing search for extraterrestrial life. Aliens. China's lunar rover actually found a gel-like substance of unusual color while traveling around the far side of the moon. While it's possible the substance is melted glass made from meteors hitting the moon's surface, according to outside scientists, China has not offered any clear indication yet about what the substance is. Do you guys remember the Nickelodeon sliming? Like, I don't know why this thought just keeps coming into my mind about this happening on the moon, but it just makes me giggle. So that's a bit of the highlights, but let's go back into time real quick. I wanted to do something fun because I went down a rabbit hole about Friday the 13th. I also got this from space.com. So if this is not right, yell at them and not me. Apparently there had been myths about where Friday the 13th came from all throughout history and time. I scoured the internet and it is somewhat unclear, but it can be traced to mythology. There's this mythical dinner party and there were 12 guests and the 13th guest showed up uninvited. And of course the 13th was the jokester god, Loki. Loki party foul. <laughs> Then also, Jesus. Jesus had a dinner party, also known as the Last Supper, where he had 13th guests, and the last one was actually Judas. And we know that does not end well. So then jump to the 1800s. There's this dude named Captain William Fowler, and he got credited for popularizing the myth about Friday the 13th. So he decided to dive in and he started a society called the 13th Club, devoted to proving that 13th is actually not unlucky. So of course he held the meeting on January 13th, 1882, of course a Friday, at 8 13th in room 13 of his cottage. I thought cottages were small. I don't I didn't know that there were more than five rooms, let alone 13. Then he wanted to level this party up, all right? So he had all the guests walk in under crossed ladders, with it, which is a superstition in itself, then go to a 13-seated table that is adorned with spilled salt, also another superstition. Now, I'm not sure what the guest said, but I am pretty sure that that is extra AF. And I don't know what happened at the end of that because that's where all my research stopped. But I do hope that they had 13 bottles of wine because they have entirely too much time on their hands. So, September 12, 1959, the Soviet Union Luna 2 was the first impact on the moon. And then a few weeks later, on October 4th, they flew over to the backside of the moon. This was very, very bad for um, the good old United States of America. And it caused this small thing called uh, the space race. I think maybe you've heard of it. But the good old US of A 
won the space race by landing on Apollo 11 on July 20th, 1969. And actually 2019, I'm sure you all know, is the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. We just celebrated that. And it doesn't really sound like that long ago over the whole course of time, but 50 years is actually a long time. Here's a photo of me looking like I will in 50 years. Moving on the future. Artemis 1 is scheduled to lift off in mid-2020 using the Space Launch System, SLS, to boost the Orion spacecraft into space. Without a crew, Orion is going to loop around the moon and deploy several small satellites before making re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The first crewed mission is expected no earlier than 2022, while the first moon landing has been scheduled for 2024. In other news, Back to Space is incredibly excited to launch our newest project, which is a giant lunar map. Wow. How big is that? Well. It is actually 11,300 square feet and it's easily the largest lunar map anywhere. This will not be your ordinary map. There will be special lighting to help celebrate blue moons and blood red moons. We'll also have augmented reality that allows explorers on the moon to get real images of the lunar surface exactly where they're standing. It's very exciting, a great way to engage, and I look forward to seeing it come to life. Anyways, thanks guys so much for tuning in. I'm Danielle Dallas-Rusa, and I can't wait for next week to give you the Back to Space Newsflash. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I'm Danielle Dallas Rusa. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit this button here. And if you want to check out our Back to Space Student Ambassadors, they have some great videos right here. Between these two channels, we're going to be keeping you entertained with some space media. See you guys soon.